MSF, Dr. Suzanne Ford, who's here in Hong Kong. Um, Hong Kong is clearly not a heaven for refugees, but still, compared to camps in the borders of Ivory Coast and Liberia or Tada, this is the top five star Marriott Hotel, I think. That's one. Two, <laughs> for me, we're talking about a caseload of what? 11,000? That's a quarter of a camp in, in Liberia or in, in Africa or other places. Um, across the panel also, I didn't see towards international community because the people who come here, as far as I discussed too many refugee cases of people, or refugee people, persons, this is a transit to Canada, US, uh, Germany, especially resettlement countries. So my question to UNHCR, regardless of uh, how the case load work and how the mechanisms work, a lot of complaints also I heard from refugees. Um, one, there is the, the, the UNHCR uh, urbanization policy, refugees urbanization policy. This is the last five years. I cannot see it clearly implemented here. Regardless of Hong Kong government or the provision they need for refugees, I think you have a role, you have a mandate. Also, if the convention is not signed by the refugee, by, by the Hong Kong government, um, they are protected by the international customary law. So you are obliged in that, that part of the law also to provide services. And I cannot see that cross, cross cut. So one, advocacy for resettlement countries, across the panel. Two, your fulfillment to fulfill the mandate. I'm sorry, you, they, they put, regardless of these allegations, this is basis or not, but you need to explain a little bit to the audience the mechanisms you do in order to address protection and social, social welfare. Thank you. Just, just to clarify, I think the numbers are a bit less than 11,000. I believe it's about six to 7,000, including asylum seekers, recognized refugees, and cat claimants. If I'm seeing some nods from people who know better than I do. Thank you very much for. I, I, yeah, probably I, I, I make it too short on, on that. Let, let me talk about the mandate of UNESCO. Uh, some mandate, uh, mainly there are three, and, uh, three uh, things. Uh, one is, uh, as we just said, you know, to uh, prevent the you know, movement of the people, or prevent that the people be sent back to the country that may be. Uh, they, they may face the persecution. And, uh, and uh, secondly, uh, we have to, we support to provide durable solution, uh, uh, our, our single, uh, durable solution for refugees. And uh, thirdly, we, we would advocate or would, uh, try to uh, do the promotion of refugee law uh, to the government. And, and that's what uh, mainly the what uh, UNESCO in Hong Kong doing that uh, we uh, work, I think, pretty well with the government to ensure that the, all the all the asylum seekers be accepted for the application and be uh, allowed to uh, remain in Hong Kong until uh, the ISD procedure be uh, finalized by UNICEF. We also have the uh, uh, local solution unit that uh, in order to uh, seek the local solution for refugees, which is in Hong Kong mainly are, uh, mainly is the resettlement. Uh, because the uh, repatriation, we have a very uh, small number. And uh, local settlement uh, uh, are quite limited, you know, to only basically to the case that uh, uh, married to the local people. So the main the local solution for Hong Kong, for refugees in Hong Kong, uh, is the resettlement that uh, we working very closely with the uh, 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 consulate you know, of uh, Canada and US. That, 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 these are the main two uh, recent main countries uh, for Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, the orders would be occasionally, you know, that have uh, been offered uh, the recent main place for Hong Kong refugees. Uh, the problem of recent uh, is is uh, the, the long process particularly after 9-11, that uh, security has been uh, uh, checked really, really seriously by, by resettlement countries. And uh, normally it would take more, uh, over a year, between one year to two years, even, 
for kids to get the discipline. I mean, to depart uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, that level. But uh, I think most kids uh, of refugee in Hong Kong uh, don't have much problem of finding resettlement. Only we have uh, some protected cases, which is quite a small number. Uh, and mainly are the cases that uh, that uh, either uh, have a criminal uh, record or something like that. You know, those cases would get the uh, really, uh, I mean, be become protected because no, no country would, would take them. Sorry, can I do my Sure, sure. Yeah, introduce I'm, yourself. Okay, I'm Lian Ting Chuang. I'm the uh, Assistant Resettlement Officer at UNHCR. So on, on your question about um, advocating for resettlement and resettlement opportunities, we, in our office, we're constantly advocating for more resettlement places to open for the refugees that are here in Hong Kong. Okay. The resettlement process is a bit complicated. Um, it, you know, different resettlement countries have different priorities as to which, um, which countries that they would most likely like to receive applications from. Um, not all resettlement countries take applications from um, refugees in Hong Kong. So our job in this office is to um, constantly be lobbying to our headquarters and also to resettlement countries to try to get them to open more resettlement places out, up, up for us. And as Susan said, unfortunately the process does take quite long. And you know, once somebody gets accepted as, as a refugee, you know, it is our mandate to provide them with, uh, to find a durable solution for them. And we do work the hardest that we can to, to be able to find them one. Except, unfortunately, in terms of resettlement, it, it, the ultimate decision-making power is really not in our hands. And really, um, you know, we work very hard to try to get our refugees resettled as quickly as possible. Seven years. But there are limits. Seven years. Okay. I don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Com I'm not gonna comment on individual cases. But generally, no. On average, seven years is not is not the case. And one of the biggest issues I think that a lot of the public has is that they're, they're getting these facts that are incorrect. And as Chusen said earlier, criticism, constructive criticism, is always welcome. We've worked very closely with a lot of NGOs, Christian Action, with RAC in the past. Um, we know that life is difficult for refugees in Hong Kong, okay? But there's a lot of incorrect factual information out there. And you know a lot of criticism that really is just not very constructive to helping refugees because that's what we're all here to do, right? We're all here to, to work to help refugees. Um, normally, it would be not more than two years for this to be allowed two years you know, in the U.S. case for the Canadian case for the Canada case about one year, one half. 